lectures on thyroid disorders, and we're going to talk about two things, Graves, and then thyroid storm. Okay. Now, the first thing is, where is your thyroid located? Anterior, right in front of your trachea. Um, that's very important because, let's see if this is the trachea here. This ever gets to swell up, uh, gets to increase in size, becomes large, as in a voider, what can occur is the trachea may become compressed, which would mean the patient has a likelihood of suffocating. Okay? So that is one thing that you always want to watch out for for their again or two. Now let's focus on the thyroid gland and what it produces. The thyroid gland will produce three things. One, T3, T4, and something called calcitonin. But for green disease, we'll focus on T3 and T4. Now remember that it comes in two forms, one free, one bound, and the one that you want to worry about is T4 or free T4. That's when you do your lab um, tests. Now there's another thing here that's involved and that is TSH. Now TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. Just like the name says, it stimulates your thyroid gland and it stimulates your thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. Now in uh, Graves disease or in hyperthyroidism, again high for meaning an overproduction of T3 and T4 in hyperthyroidism, TSH should be decreased. Now, why is that? Remember, TSH uh, is secreted to increase T3 and T4. So the sole purpose is to produce more T3 and T4. And if your body's already producing T3 and T4, then there is no need for your body to secrete thyroid stimulating hormone, therefore it will be decreased. So when you do lab work, you're looking for TSH. Is it higher, is it normal, or is it decreased? Well, if it's decreased, then you know that something else is causing your body to produce T3 and T4. Now in Graves' disease, what actually causes your body to secrete or to produce more T3 and T4 is or are your own is your own immune system. So this is an autoimmune disorder. Okay? Now what your antibodies do is there's receptors on here that are supposed to bind to TSH. So TSH is supposed to come here, sit on here, and it's supposed to make T3 or T4. But again, this is an autoimmune disorder, so your antibodies come here and they actually stimulate where TSH is supposed to stimulate. Again, it's an autoimmune disorder. Now what ends up happening is these antibodies continuously or maybe intermittently um, attack your thyroid gland and therefore more T3 or T4 is secreted. Now T3 and T4 is very important because it affects many, many, many parts of your body. We're just going to go over those right now really brief. One, increases metabolism. And uh, the biggies are it makes your, your body more sensitive to epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, what does that really mean? Um, think of hyperthyroidism kind of like when you're going to go work out or when you've drank a lot of caffeine. Okay, or when you're having to study for something, cram really hard for something, what does your body do? Now, if you're gonna go for a workout, or if you've been working out all day, you've been in the gym, what happens to your heart? Okay, your heart rate will increase. Your temperature will increase. Therefore, you sweat more. The other thing, when you're using massive amounts
amounts of energy, what happens? Well, you consume calories, okay? So you have increased calorie intake, increased calorie usage. Um, so that's pretty much what the T3 and T4 do. They put your body in a hypermetabolic state. So you're using more energy, your heart is pounding, it's beating harder, it's beating faster. So you run into problems with palpitations because your heart is pump, 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 suffering from tachycardia. So patients with these, you always want to make sure you monitor their heart. So you would do something like an EKG. So there's one intervention for you. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that their blood pressure um, isn't too high. And if it is, then you give them something like a beta blocker, intervention number two. Okay, so the heart's pumping, 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 pumping. One of the problems that you want to run, or you may run into would be something like a heart failure from the heart overworking itself too much. So there's, those are a couple of the complications when it comes to the heart. And the reason that occurs is again, the heart is, becomes a little bit more sensitive to epinephrine and norepinephrine, and really your entire body, your muscles, your gastrointestinal system, and the way that your stomach is affected is um, you're just m metabolizing things so quickly that it's just kind of flowing through your stomach, through your large and small bowel or small and large bowel. And so what ends up happening, patients uh, complain of large amounts of or big amounts of abdominal pain and they have frequent stools because that food that they're consuming is just running through their digestive system so quickly. So remember, asking them if they're having any, any abdominal cramping, abdominal pain, any nausea or vomiting, how many stools are they having in a day? Um, if they're having a lot of stools, a lot of things that they uh, may also get rid of with your when having bowel movements is water. So you'd want to make sure that they have a good um, oral intake or IV intake of fluid so they do not dehydrate. Now we've talked about when you're in the gym or when you're moving around continuously non-stop what ends up happening your temperature goes up now you have to worry about temperature if it gets to be uh, 105 that's what the book says but anything, anything really over 103 can become a problem if it gets to 105 and you run into some brain damage issues there so you always want to make sure that you monitor the temperature and the book talks about something called heat intolerance that's a bit of a misnomer um, what it's really saying is these patients are moving around so much, they're so active that their own body elevates their temperature. So you definitely do not want to put them in any place where it's hot. Why? Well, because then they'll have the likelihood of getting a temperature over 105, causing brain damage. So you want to put them in a cool temperature place, cool setting. So that would be another intervention. Put them in a cool setting. And you want to make sure that they're in a calm setting because these patients are already agitated as it is. I mean, they're just super, super hyper, hyper on the go all the time. So you want to provide a calm setting. And then another intervention for you there. Okay. Um, the other thing is you want to provide high calorie, high protein, high carb meals because again, they're running through all this uh, nutrition. So most of these patients, you'll notice or you should see something called decrease in weight or weight loss so there would be a weight change okay so we talked we talked about increased metabolism heat intolerance uh, weight change frequent stools and a biggie that the book will talk about or that you might run into your exam is something called exophthalmus now what that is is a protrusion of the eyes um, go ahead and google that if you want so what you need to do for these patients is provide eye drops or eye care, frequent eye care. Make sure that uh, number one, they don't get dry, and two, since they are protruding, since they are bulging out, that the lenses do not get scratched. So there's another intervention for you. <clears throat> now, the way to take care of this um, would be one, maybe given some drugs to counter the effects of uh, overproduction of T3 and T4 or more likely they'll undergo some type of radiation therapy or some type of surgery to actually resect partially or complete thyroidectomy 
And in that case, if they do have surgery, then what you need to do is you need to put them in a semi-valid or semi-upright position. You don't want to be, uh, you don't want that patient to be in a lying position again because that makes it more difficult for them to breathe. So you will also monitor again their O2 saturation levels. And the other thing that you want to make sure you have in their room or nearby is a tracheostomy tray. Okay, because again, if the thyroid region or the throat region um, becomes swollen, then that makes it difficult for that patient to breathe. So remember always your ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. So you want to make sure that you maintain a pain airway that they can actually breathe. So in case that does swell, you may need to have a tracheostomy tray in the room at all times. Now we already talked about Graves' disease. Uh, Graves' disease is again is an autoimmune disorder affecting the thyroid gland. Well, when this excess T3 and T4 occurs, it affects the entire body. And that effect, the, the entire effect of the body, that is what's actually called a thyroid storm.